Since it's around the time colleges are beginning to start, I thought it could be helpful to sort of go over some studying tips that I found helpful throughout college, specifically geared towards computer science students. So the first tip I have is to attend every lecture and every discussion section. In college, it's super easy to just not show up, skip a class, or simply just watch a recording of a lecture because lectures are usually recorded. 80% of the actual effort you need to put in or 80% of the work is just kind of showing up. And I've mentioned this before, but specifically for discussion sections, they are extremely helpful for programming assignments. You can ask really specific questions towards the teaching assistants because their whole job is to help you understand the assignments a little bit more or certain topics a little bit more. And I specifically remember going to discussion sections honestly helped me so much when it came to just beginning to solve some of the programming assignments I had in my computer science classes. So literally just showing up and avoiding distractions, like don't go on Amazon and do online shopping, don't look at your phone, don't go browsing social media. If you just sit down, take notes and pay attention for the hour lecture or however long the lecture actually is, that's just a tremendous help without even doing too much extra work. Like I said, it's basically 80% of the, the hard work, the effort is literally just showing up and paying attention. Now, when it comes to actually taking notes, some people prefer typing them, some people prefer writing them. I personally wrote all of my notes because I felt like the action of writing notes helped with memorization or information retention. Sometimes I wish that I actually did type the notes though, because sometimes when I was studying specifically for exams and I wanted to search for a specific term, I couldn't just control F through a physical notebook. I had to actually flip through all of the pages, which was really annoying. But if I had typed them or at least wrote them and then transcribed them on the computer, then I can control F. That makes it a lot easier to search for specific terms but you know, there's pros and cons to each way of taking notes, so I'll leave that up to you. My next tip is to join groups if you're allowed to for whatever programming assignment you might be working on. Now for a lot of programming classes, you'll usually have at least some programming assignments where you're allowed to work in a group, where sometimes you don't actually have to, it's not like mandatory to work in a group, but you're allowed to. And I highly suggest that if you're allowed to, you should take advantage of that. Throughout my time in college, I saw a lot of students simply just try to do the assignments fully by themselves. And hey, that's impressive. I don't want to, you know, criticize anyone who wants to just run through all of the assignments and, you know, crack on it on their own time, crack on it, you know, d do it on their own time. But I honestly think bouncing ideas off other people and seeing how they think about different problems can really help just overall learning as well as specifically if you're struggling with certain topics in a computer science class. Additionally, it just takes a lot of stress off you personally because now the assignment stress level is kind of distributed among everyone in the group instead of 100% of the stress being on you. And also just working in a group is great for when you actually are going to move into the software engineering industry because you know, you could be the best coder in the world, but having solid communication skills and understanding team dynamics is also just really important. Now, when it comes to studying for computer science exams, it can be a little bit tricky. From my experience in college, it was usually a mix of multiple choice questions where they would be like, hey, what does this code block print or what happens when this loop finishes or sometimes just memorization questions and usually mixed in with open-ended questions where it'll be like okay write out the code for this functionality so you'll usually have to write code by hand if you haven't done that before you usually have to do that on computer science exams at least that's what i had to do now for me personally i think creating study guides is one of the most effective ways of actually studying for computer science exams and i did this pretty much all the time for all of my exams, kind of through all my different types of classes, both computer science and non-computer science. What's even better is if you can get a shared collaborative Google Doc that everyone in the class can sort of contribute to. And I specifically remember a lot of classes where students would post these, you know, Google Drive links or Google Doc links to 
the collaborative study guide for whatever exam we were taking in our class forums and that way everyone could contribute and honestly it was just awesome as someone who is just like looking through the forum and I see the link I can click on it and bam it's a crowdsourced compilation of what all the students in the class think is going to be on the exam or important enough to be on the exam. Also I just think the act of actually creating a study guide whether it's digital or physical is actually studying on its own. It's just really nice because I specifically remember in multiple classes going on our class forums and just searching for like collaborative study doc and there being a link and then I can see from the top all the way to the bottom if I go through all of the pages then I feel relatively comfortable with what might be on the exam because it's not just me thinking about it, it's a lot of other people in the class. So again, that sort of crowdsourced effort to studying for a particular exam in a computer science class. Now I've mentioned this note before, but in the wise words of my very first computer science professor in college, specifically geared towards programming assignments, start early and start often. It's super easy to just read the instructions when you get the assignment and you think, hey, this is actually really easy and then not think about it till the day before because you think it's easy and then you actually start working on it and you realize that it's actually way harder than you initially thought. You'll thank me later, but spreading out the work across multiple days and the stress across multiple days will definitely help you in the long term to avoid 12 hour coding sessions right before the programming assignment is due. And sort of in conjunction with that, if you start the programming assignments early, you can usually go to the computer science lab. And from my experience in computer science classes doing programming assignments, the professors will sort of schedule computer science student tutors to walk around and help students with the actual programming assignment and answer questions or help them overcome problems if they're stuck. Now, if you go early on before it's actually due, several days before it's actually due, the tutors are usually generally free and they can spend a lot more time with you helping to overcome problems. But if you wait till the night before, from my experience, the computer science labs are usually so packed and the tutors can usually only spend like two to five minutes per person in answering just really quick questions instead of actually helping you think through the problem. So even just for problem solving aspect of it, you might want to start the programming assignments early and you should start them early just because you can sort of, again, spread that stress level across multiple days and take advantage of any potential computer science tutors that are in the computer science labs. The last tip pertains to topics you may be struggling with, and I think there are a couple different ways to actually go about it. So let's say you're learning about Turing machines and you're just really struggling to understand it and you've already gone through all of the lectures. I think there are a couple strong options you can do when it comes to struggling with a specific topic. So first, like I mentioned in the first tip, go to discussion sections because they may be able to go more in depth regarding whatever you're struggling with and hopefully clear up some things you're confused about. Second, in sort of a similar vein, try to go to professor office hours. Now, a lot of students actually don't take advantage of professor office hours, and honestly, when I was in college, I didn't go to them as often, but a lot of the time, since students don't use them, the professors are pretty free, and you can actually almost get one-on-one -on -one time with them for them to explain a specific topic that they were teaching in lecture a little bit more. And third, this is my personal option, was watching a lot of YouTube videos regarding that topic. Sometimes just hearing it explained by somebody else or in a different way can really help you just digest the information more and actually understand it. So whether it was math problems or computer science problems, just looking up a YouTube video covering that specific topic and I'm able to pause and go back and just hearing someone different kind of explain it definitely helped me understand and digest some more difficult topics throughout my time in college. And honestly, it's just a little bit more accessible than waiting for discussion sections or office hours. So I hope those tips helped you if you're a computer science student or if you're just a regular student, hopefully those can be applied to you as well. I also want to give a quick shout out 
that to a survey link in the description below. I was reached out to by a fellow UCSD student about potentially mentioning something in one of my videos. The survey deals with student loans and uh, student debt, stuff like that. I filled out the survey. They're working on a project related to that. So I said I would gladly shout it out. So if you have some free time, super quick, consider filling it out in the description below. My name is Michael. You might see my YouTube channel name change occasionally because again, I'm just thinking about some different names now and again, but it's still the old same guy. If you're looking for minimalist programmer merch, consider checking out some of the clothes I've been designing over at nullref.co. We do bad British accents at the end of every video. Check out one of my past videos on my past self would thank you dearly and check out one of my future videos. Future self would also thank you dearly. That's all from me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully I see you in another one. Bye-bye.